Oh, what's up everybody? Channel Pup here, and in today we're going to be talking about six things I do not care for about the MCU Spider-Man. And just a reminder, these videos are made possible by my supporters on this platform, so if you do want to support me, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And be sure to check out the Patreon link in the description below. Now before I start listing these things, I just want to say I think there's a tendency to place a lot of stake into objective criticism, as if to say that these are things that are legitimately wrong with the film, when these are, in this case, just things that don't really work for me. Am I saying that these films are perfect? No. But as a matter of fact, I have sung the praises of Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home till the cows came home. And I think I developed a reputation as something of an MCU Spider-Man chill. Partially my own fault, I was learning how to best represent myself at that time. These are all formative years. But let me set the record straight here. While these are six things I really don't like about the MCU Spider-Man, they are just my own subjective views, just things that I wish they did differently. I don't hold this against the films in themselves. Well, maybe some of them. Some of them I would maybe call, like, you know, actual criticisms of things I definitely think should have been done differently. But for the most part, it's just things that I personally wish were done differently. Now, I know what's going to happen. There's going to be some people in the comments below saying, Oh, you're just an MCU Spider-Man hater, even after I've said all of this stuff. And I think there is a tendency for YouTubers to go out of their way to really, really, really drive home the truth about their opinions and dispel any potential uh, misunderstandings. But it's inevitable as far as I see it. So, if you see one of these absolute imbeciles in the comments below, I invite you to point and laugh at them. And without further ado, let's talk about the six things I dislike about the MCU Spider-Man. So, I'm gonna start off at number six. I think the Iron Man 2 retcon was completely unnecessary. Now this is at the bottom as there's not really any evidence for this in the actual films itself, but basically there was a theory when Spider-Man arrived in the MCU that this kid with an Iron Man helmet on from Iron Man 2 would be Peter Parker. Now I'm not really one to dunk on fan theories. If people are just having fun, you know, that's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But uh, personally, I, I've never really subscribed to the notion of you see this random character here that kind of fits the bill for what this character could be, therefore it's that character. Character, it, this, it's just not something I subscribe to. And I believe that Tom Holland and Kevin Feige have publicly stated that, yes, it's canon now, and I just, I don't think that's necessary. I think, if anything, it just makes the Marvel Universe feel really conveniently small. It's not something I'm losing any sleep over, and again, I still say if it's not in the films, it doesn't really count, but, like, yeah, it's, it's something I don't like. Coming in at number five is the obnoxious MCU name-dropping. Now, this doesn't mean all MCU cameos in the MCU Spider-Man films are bad by any stretch. There's a lot that I really like in there. I really enjoyed the little Captain America PSA messages. I like Spider-Man's dynamic with Tony Stark in Spider-Man Homecoming and Infinity War. And I'm looking forward to Spidey with Doctor Strange in Spider-Man No Way Home as well. I think they've really made the most of Spider-Man being in the MCU, and I think that's good. What I'm not fond of, though, is when it kind of just becomes cheap name-dropping. So, for example, like when they make jokes about, ah, oh, Spider-Man studies Thor in his uh, science class, and when they just kind of list off MCU character names in Far From Home during the recruitment scene. Or, I think the worst offender was the scene shortly before the final battle of Spider-Man Homecoming, where Happy Hogan is just reading a laundry list of MCU references while the Stark Quinjet takes off. We get it, it's in the MCU, we get it, these characters exist. You know, <laughs> it doesn't even feel very nuanced or clever. I, I just, I don't care for that. I'm, I'm sure that there are some people that find that a lot of fun. I personally, nah, I'd rather see it expanded on in a meaningful way, like what they did with Stark and Captain America's little cameos. Coming in at number four, there are too many suits in these movies. I like them. I like pretty much most of the suits here. But there's, it doesn't change the fact that, like, Spider-Man's got a suit for every situation. And it kind of dilutes the importance of that classic Spidey look. For starters, I'm of the philosophy that you shouldn't really change Spider-Man's signature look too much. Make little tweaks here and there, that's fine. But personally, I swing the way of the Raimi trilogy, where it's like, there's one core suit, and yeah, there's a few tiny tweaks between movies, but they're not necessarily canonical changes. I think it gives that Spider-Man a very distinctive look, and I really would have appreciated if they had done a similar philosophy with the MCU Spider-Man. I can understand the homemade suit, the Stark suit, the Iron Spider, 
and add a push the upgraded suit and I mean the upgraded suit is my favorite of the bunch as, to, as far as appearance goes but I still think that Spider-Man should have one signature look in each incarnation and I feel that definitely gets lost when Spider-Man is packing five suits per film now but they do at least have the overall same aesthetic pursuit like the lenses are the same and the overall web layout is the same per each suit so I, I guess I kind of like that um yeah Nah, I don't know, toy sales, I guess. Little transparent, though. Coming in at number three is texting and swinging. This sounds like such a boomer complaint. I don't have an issue with the fact that Spider-Man is texting and swinging as such. It's just, in that big final swing for Spider-Man Far From Home, this was the first major New York City swing for the MCU Spider-Man. It was something that he kind of had earned. They were kind of building up to, Spider-Man is now coming to his own. He's out of the shadow of Tony Stark and the other Avengers. This is basically a one-man Avengers team, Spider-Man, the crown jewel of the Marvel Universe. And that is such an awesome moment if he didn't have a phone in his hand the entire time and wasn't taking selfies during the whole thing. Now, I get it. It's a more character-driven final swing in that case. Like, it tells us a bit more about Peter Parker while he's swinging along, but I can't deny it does take away from some of the gravitas of that scene. Still a great scene, don't get me wrong, but I just think it would have been that much cooler if we just focused on Spider-Man web swinging and didn't have the phone. I get it, he's talking to MJ, he's going on a date, and that's how they kind of telegraph that, but they already had Peter say he had a date to go to shortly before this, so they kind of didn't need this in here. Also, there's a reference to Insomniac Spider-Man with the selfie, and that's so well and good, but I don't know. I, I feel that's fine in Insomniac Spidey, but it doesn't need to be here. Cute little nod, I guess, but it's either just fan service or respect between two companies, but y you know, it's, it's not necessary. Coming in at number two is the handling of Spider-Man's secret identity. So I actually have a lot of little bones to pick with the handling of Spider-Man's secret identity in the MCU. For starters, Spider-Man is, at least to my knowledge currently anyway, the only superhero in the MCU to have a secret identity, and it's arguably the most important one of the bunch. And it makes him stand out from the crowd. Now, in previous Spidey films prior to the MCU, pretty much every movie, the villains would find out Peter's secret identity, with the main exceptions being Electro and Rhino. It's almost become like a tradition at this point that the main villain of every Spider-Man film will find out Peter's secret identity, and I've never really got that, because, I mean, like, look at the Spider-Man comics, for example. Like, with that laundry list of villains that Spider-Man has, if they all knew Spider-Man's secret identity, there wouldn't really be much point in wearing the mask, would there? It's something that these films often do to raise the stakes a bit, but I'd be much more inclined to see a different way of raising the stakes to that level without actually revealing Peter Parker's secret identity. It's a chance to get creative, but alas, the MCU does it again, as Vulture and Mysterio both find out Spider-Man's secret identity. It would have been such a breath of fresh air to have them not find out. Now, I'll say this, it does at least balance out a little bit though, as I think what they did with the secret identity reveals yeah, kind of, okay, became kind of worth it, but still, it's like, I don't know, I feel like we could have used a few films in between that time that maybe didn't do that. I hold my hands up and admit it does amount to more interesting things in the MCU, but it's kind of like, come on now, we're on the third cinematic Spider-Man, and they're still finding out his secret identity. Come on. Now, I know that Spider-Man villains in the comic books have found out Spider-Man's secret identity from time to time, often retconned. The main one that actually knows Spider-Man's secret identity is usually Norman Osborn, which is what makes him stand out from the crowd. I think with the exception of Shocker, like, they all know Peter's secret identity in the MCU. Heck, why does he unmask in front of Thanos? I'm not saying Thanos is the kind of person to go after his family or anything like that. He's not very... Uh, you prejudiced or biased in that regard, but like, why do it? Also, in Infinity War, he's literally unmasking to everybody he meets. He doesn't know that Star-Lord's not the kind of dickhead that would reveal his secret identity. I've always liked that dynamic of Spider-Man not even trusting other superheroes with his secret identity, and that's definitely lost here. And then on the other side of things, we've also got how just Peter's friends and circle treat his secret identity. It's all just kind of too convenient. Aunt May finds out his secret identity and is just completely fine with it. More on that later. And to distract his class from finding out that he's Spider-Man, all he has to do is pretend that there are baby mountain goats to see. 
I'm sorry, but that is too easy and just outright farcical at that point. Then when Brad points out that Peter Parker goes missing and might be Spider-Man, the teachers kind of just shrug it off. I feel like you would have just been so much better off not even acknowledging it at that point. Peter's secret identity has been handled so flippantly in the MCU. But I will say this, scenes with the Vulture discovering Peter's secret identity and Mysterio going as far as to reveal it to the world have kind of made up for those problems. Yeah, it's kind of give or take at this point. But I definitely would have rather had Peter have a much harder time keeping his identity a secret from his friends, as opposed to so many of them just conveniently turning a blind eye to it. And I really would have liked for Peter to have kept his secret around people like Doctor Strange and all of the people he met during Infinity War. I'm fine if people find out against his will, like how Tony found out, but like, I just, I, I don't get why he would just be unmasking around every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Like, how do you know Star Lord's not gonna screw you over, you know? And the thing is, like, even people that Peter could probably bet that wouldn't screw him over in, like, different media and stuff, he would still keep it a secret because, I don't know, trust issues. You could play that up for those trademark MCU laughs. This is one aspect of the story that I feel has been really mishandled. And if Peter's identity remains public after the events of No Way Home, that's just gonna really kind of be the icing on the shit cake there. Because Peter having a secret identity separates him from the rest of the crowd. I've heard arguments saying, well, it's just an MCU thing, but I don't think all of the characters in this universe should have uniformity. Let them be individuals. And the number one worst thing about MCU Spider-Man, in my opinion, all just subjective stuff, in some cases nitpicks, is Aunt May, unfortunately. Now, I'm gonna say this right now, I think Marissa Tomei does really well in this role. I think she's a good actress. And I think in scenes like the scene in Homecoming where she asks Peter to just kind of tell the truth and cut the bullshit, she's really good. She really shines there. And I appreciate that Aunt May's dynamic with Peter is more like that of a mother. She's less the doting old frail aunt, and again, more Peter's mother but they go too far in the opposite direction. Because Aunt May, the old woman, has been reimagined as a sexy MILF that everybody wants to get with. No, the issue is not just that Marissa Tomei is an attractive woman. You can have an attractive person play Aunt May. Fair enough. Though I kinda feel like the MCU is lacking in the old woman department. Except for that one old lady that got punched by Captain Marvel. Yep, that's the MCU's attitude towards the older demographic, it seems. But okay, rolling with that, did they have to have all of the characters simp for her? For example, Del Mar, Happy Hogan, the guys at the restaurant. Why is this necessary? It's such an oddly regressive way of treating this character. And then, yeah, admittedly, there is also the waste of the identity reveal to Aunt May. Like... There's a lot to explore there, and they explore none of it. Now, I get it. No Way Home did want to focus... No, not No Way Home. Far From Home did want to focus on other things. And that's fine and all, but there's definitely an opportunity for a story that hasn't been told here before. And the fact that she just kind of rolls with it is just another thing that just makes things easier for Peter Parker in the identity department. Oh, it's very convenient. In spite of the fact that she has addressed a lot of concern about this before. Now, I'm not saying that this is preposterous. I'm not saying that this is unrealistic. It, it is quite funny. It is kind of falling into that Parker Luck stuff that Aunt May just happens to be fine with it. But there's a lot of untapped potential here that remains untapped because of it. I don't rule out that they could expand on this a little more in Spider-Man No Way Home, but for now, untapped potential remains untapped. But on top of all of that, I also just don't feel like we know this Aunt May. She's really not very present in these movies. And because of the very erratic changes in her perspectives on Peter Parker being Spider-Man between Homecoming and Far From Home, I feel like she's even more of a stranger to me. Which is a shame because Aunt May in the Raimi films was one of the best things about those films. Underappreciated. Completely underappreciated. She had some of the best, most profound dialogue in those films was someone that Peter could always rely on. She was a serious backbone to that Peter Parker's world. Also, Rosemary Harris's performance was deserving of all of the Oscars in the world, and it's such a shame to see that amazing character reduced down to object of the men of the MCU's lust. I mean, okay, there's a little more to her than that. I mean, like, 
me making that statement in itself is a bit misogynistic, but there's definitely a less defined character here. Like, significantly less. Even, even less defined than the Amazing Spider-Man universe's aren't me. I feel like I got to know her even better than this one, which is a damn shame. Absolutely no idea why they did this. Now, it's kind of, it's kind of telling that across all of the appearances of the MCU Spider-Man, I can really only find five things that I disliked about it. And again, it is a very subjective list. These are more creative decisions that I disagree with. And as I say, I do not take issue with people airing their own subjective little gripes with these films, just as long as there is an acknowledgement of that. I feel it becomes bad faith criticism when they're outright holding it against the movie and saying that the filmmakers are shit because of it. And before you tell me that nobody's saying that and then come at me with your own criticisms as if that somehow overrides that, no, these things are out there just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And if you think that that shoe fits you and you're, you're gonna accuse me of calling you out, just, just look inward. Look inward. Don't be silly. And also, I know that every time I get negative about something MCU-related, it becomes, for some reason, a big controversy. So again, don't be a big baby. Anyways, that's been me. I love these movies. And until the next time, fuck off. So what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous, like the following people. Who are JK Strife, Marcus Ward, Cirrus the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, David 20 Covers, Sergio, George is Lost, Legendary Ray Ray, Cheesemaster769, Adam Myers, and Fayalan Schwarzenkraub. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best, but as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching guys and have a great day.